man's personality and character is exuded through his haircut. Your image is important. Our high-end services range from a traditional haircut and shave to gray blending, beard shaping, and unwanted hair removal. Located at 425 Victoria Avenue East, book your appointment online now at modernmen.ca or call Tammy, 306-522-4111. Modern Men, a haircut for the modern man. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it, like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street and view our showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. John Murphy, the assistant general manager of the Toronto Argonauts. Um, what can you tell the fans about Cameron Judge? All of us agreed that he was the best player, you know, on the board, and that was very exciting. You know, from what I know right now, you know, his thing was, uh, I want to concentrate on this NFL workout. So for him to have a shot of working out for the Raiders, uh, I think it's something very important for him at this stage of his career. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Holy, welcome everybody. Welcome to the RP show. It is a Flame Tech Football Friday, and we got RP here, Moose there, Hall of Fame rider, broadcaster John Lynch is on the sponsor's couch, and he is just uh, fit to be tied. He can't wait to get in here and talk ball today. It's a big day, as uh, got a, producer Clark can take a bow. It's one of our biggest days in terms of guests. We've got CFLPA president Solomon Elamimian joining us, the recently retired Solly. Notice what I'm wearing. The viewers can't see this, but the, or sorry, the listeners can't, but the viewers can. CFLPA shirt. Cam Judge will be with us, the recently signed Toronto Argonaut linebacker. He had some spicy things to say in a conference call yesterday or a Zoom meeting with Toronto Media after signing with the Boltman. And then Derek Moncrief of the Los Angeles Rams will be with us, the pride of Prattville, Alabama, and a former Saskatchewan Rough Rider, now the first ever NFL player live in the bunker that we've ever had, Moose. That's exciting. That's very exciting. Can I say one thing before I get to the quick six show topics? Our good friend Jamie Anstey out in Halifax watches every day, and he said um, Canadians would be lost without the view for sports fans, which is the Rod Peterson show, and it's blowing people's minds in the Maritimes that the show comes from the sweatpants capital, which is Regina, Saskatchewan. And I didn't tweet it, Jamie, but I... I I want to say this to all our viewers across all 10 provinces and 31 states. It shouldn't blow your mind that the show's originating from the Bermuda Triangle of the National Hockey League or the heartbeat of the Canadian Football League, where we're at. It's like Paul Feinbaum doing his SEC show on ESPN out of Alabama. It is the, you know, I said I was talking about Toronto Hamilton reporter the other day. He said the roots of the National Hockey League go back 100 years. They were... 
heavily weighted towards Saskatchewan going back that long. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it shouldn't blow your mind that this show, the view for sports fans is coming from here. That's all that I want to say. But thank you for, uh, for noticing. All right. Let's hit the quick six. Director Jordan, please. We're going to mix in a little hockey here in the quick six before we go all ball with our ballers today. But the one that everybody's talking about is Randy Ambrosi, the commissioner of the CFL, doing a, a surprising interview, if you will, with the Canadian press, where he said, the quote that I got out of this is, we're going to play in 2021. And when I talk about people that are chomping at the bit, I see there's a comment here from Trent in Norway. Can you find that, Clark, and put it up? They're coming in like a jackpot machine here slot machine Trent Bruner says Norway calling Dave Naylor from TSN writes that the CFL won't play without fans in the stands yada 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 I can't see the rest of it it's too far away from me but I so Naylor's saying they won't play without fans well that's incredibly disappointing to me and I've said they have to play no matter what here's Naylor who's speaking by the way on behalf of the owners and on behalf of the league, saying if we can't have fans, we're not playing. Look at Lynch's reaction. He's just stunned. Stunned. And you said in your tweet, I think it was your tweet yesterday, you said don't blame government, or you have said that. I've said it. A lot of very wise pundits, not the least of which is Mike Stackhouse, who writes a great column on rodpeterson.com. It's on there right now. He's saying this is all in the, in the government's hands. It wasn't for curling Canada. It's not for the National Hockey League. It's not for the WHL that's playing out of a hub center. So I don't see how you can blame the government for if the CFL doesn't play. Your take on that? Um, yeah, I'm right there. You can't blame the government. I mean, the government plays a role, absolutely. They have to sign off on the plan. They have to approve it, right? But at the end of the day, at the end of the day if you don't play, it's on you. It means your plan wasn't good enough. You didn't want to play didn't want to spend the money or didn't want to put in the work, right? It's how it looks to me. Yeah. I mean, if you want to play, you'll put in the work. You'll have a COVID team, right? That'll be tasked for coming up with ways to play if we have COVID. And that'll cost a little bit of money. You'll have to pay for extra vaccines potentially or extra testing or, you know, whatever it might be that will get this approved by government. Or you'll have to change the way you do business to a way that works in a pandemic. If you're not willing to do those things, then you can say, look, it, the government won't let us play like we always have. So we don't want to play. Okay, so I just called it up here at tsn.ca. And of course, Dave Naylor is a great friend of ours. The headline is the CFL isn't going to play without fans in the stands. But I'll tell you what, if that's the case, then I've lost any faith that I've got left in the leaders of the Canadian Football League. This will be incredibly sad if it's vaccine or nothing for the CFL and will have let a lot of people down, not the least of which is the players. And I see that the CFLPA is writing in. They say, looking good, gentlemen. That's why I'm wearing the suit coat today because they sent this long sleeve T-shirt, which I rarely wear that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put a blazer on over top of this and uh, class things up a little bit. But that's a poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. What should RP wear as the host of the show? Suit coat or the traditional bunny hug, which is the vernacular here in the rectangle? In the sweatpants capital, bunny hug is another word for hoodie. What are they saying, dupes? 75% are on the bunny hug train. Yeah, but they haven't seen this yet. They haven't seen this. I think it looks sharp. And the, you know, the black is slimming. I tell you. My, <laughs> You're saying not, I'm fat? My CFL PA long sleeve fits like a glove. And I'm going to wear it tomorrow for our Saskatchewan show. But, I mean, it fits like a glove. I love, love it. it. Love yeah. it. Carlos in Indianapolis is watching. He says, this show feels too casual for the suit coat. Bunny hug it is. Well, for when it's cold out anyway. I thought I'd change things up today. And I, I think I'm going to wear this CFL PA event, outfit for special events. That's how I feel about it. I like it. Anyways. Very disappointed in the CFL if they don't play in 2021 without fans. Moving on to point two, the negativity that came out of the announcement yesterday from Randy Ambrosi, which isn't even an announcement. It was a, it was a quote in an interview, and, and kudos to Randy for saying it. But the players were all, yeah, 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 I've heard this before. I saw five, six players tweeting that. Then I saw Danny Austin of the Calgary Sun going back at the players saying, where's the negativity coming from? We're months away from a season. Why you got to be so negative? It's, it's crying wolf. Can you blame these players? 
<laughs> My heart is sinking by the minute as I think about this article from Naylor. Because again, he's speaking on behalf of the league and the owners and the presidents. That is not a sign of strong leadership from the leaders of the Canadian Football League if they can't find a way to play or aren't willing to spend the money to play without fans when other leagues are. I can't tell you how disappointed I am in them. Anyways, moving on to point three. We'll get into this later with uh, Derek Moncrief because he's an NFL player coming into the bunker. The Carson Wentz fallout. I did a little more digging. Remember, this broke just before we went to air yesterday. The Carson Wentz was dealt from the Eagles to the Colts for two draft picks. And then you mentioned how they're going to pick up $33 million of his salary. That's unbelievable. Dead money on the Eagles ca um, cap for yeah. next year, for 2021, for $33 million. But I, you kind of forget, right, that Wentz was very good at one time. Oh, yeah. He started all 16 games as a rookie. He finished third in NFL MVP voting as a sophomore. He's got the tools. Something happened to him. And he has taken some injuries and some hits to the noggin, and he hasn't been the same since. But the Colts are willing to take that gamble. Remember when he was good in Philadelphia, his offensive, of co uh, his offensive coordinator was? Frank Reich. Frank Reich, who's now the head coach in Indianapolis. This is the perfect scenario for jump-starting your career again and getting it back to what it was, the familiarity of the people around you. This could be really good for Carson Wentz. Uh, I, it is a football Friday for Flame Tech, so I invite any of your commentary today from the viewers. Jeff, the Stampeders fan, writes in and he says, if the CFL isn't viable without fans, then it's not viable. So be it, unless it gets a cash injection. I'll say it again, disappointed in the leadership of this league if they can't find a way to play without fans. I, I can't say it any more than any more times than that. But we'll, we'll get your comments as we roll throughout the morning here on Canada's daytime sports talk show. This is the warm-up, by the way, for the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Come in and warm up at the Four Seasons. You're home for the NFL. I had, or NHL now, George wants us to say, NHL leftovers. It's becoming a thing. Every morning, or as many mornings as I can, I put five thoughts from the prior night's NHL games. So I'm watching the Leafs and the Sens last night, and I'm watching Brady Kachuk run around and cross-check guys in the back of the head after the whistle, and I see his brother do the same thing, and don't talk to me in Calgary about Matthew Kachuk not being a spot picker. Ask Mark Scheifele, who got knocked out of the playoffs last year. Ask Jack Campbell, the Leafs goalie, who hasn't played since Kachuk accidentally fell on him. And I'm sitting in my Lazy Boy going, I don't remember Keith Kachuk playing that way. I don't remember him being a dirty player. I actually really like Keith Kachuk as a player. He was an honest, gritty player. His boys don't play that way. So I shot a text message to a teammate of Keith Kachuk's from the 90s, and he did speak off the record, so I won't out him. But I said, did, did I miss something? Did Keith Kachuk play this way? And he says, no, but he couldn't. In the 90s, you'd have had to answer for that. So they don't have to answer for it anymore. So I said in my leftovers, Keith Kachuk wasn't a spot picker like Brady and Matthew. Spot picker, a lot of people, I guess that's an old hockey term. A lot of people don't even understand what it is. And it comes from deep inside hockey culture, which is somebody who picks their spot when an opponent is vulnerable. You had another definition for spot picker earlier. Similar. Similar. You know, what was yours? Well, you know, I'm not dropping the gloves with you, but you asked me in the third period, I'm dropping them with you. Like, you pick your spot, you yes. get to choose. So in both cases, mm -hmm. pick your spot, who you're going to fight, pick and spot when you're going to nail somebody if he's not looking or it's after the whistle or in the case of Jack Campbell laying down on the ice. That's all I'm saying. Those two are spot pickers, and they wouldn't have been able to get away with it in the 90s, and their dad never played that way. So that's my one leftover, and I don't respect that, by the way. And at some point, when's the NHL going to wake up and when they say, oh, sorry, it didn't mean to take out the back of Shifley's leg and knock him out for the... When are they going to start realizing it's not an accident? Uh, point three of my leftover, Sam Steele has arrived. Unfortunately, his teammates haven't. He scored the only goal last night and the Ducks lost to Minnesota, if you noticed. Um, also, who do the Flames give up for Jack Eichel? Who's it going to be? You see Taylor Hall's talking contract extension with the Sabres. Eichel's going, just wait, you'll get sick here too. <laughs> like I did, right? Maybe they'll move him, I don't know, but the Sabres have lost three in a row. Yeah. 
And my last one is that the Kings are quite young and also quite old. When you look at Drew Doughty and Jonathan Quick and Dustin Brown, they're all mid to late 30s. Now, you pointed out that Dustin Brown scored eight goals. Yeah. All that tells me is trade him now. Because <laughs> if you're the Kings, you're saying we're not going anywhere. So we got some great pieces to start a rebuild right now. Do they do it? I think they should. You know, Kopitar, Doughty. Brown, you could move a lot of these pieces and really kickstart the next generation in L.A. I think it's a great idea. So, no, it's fun. You know, I got a tweet locked and loaded, ready to go for this afternoon. It is 2009 all over again in the NHL. Dustin Brown's got eight goals. Patrick Kane is fifth in the league in scoring. Joe Thornton's got eight points in eight games. And Mike Smith is fourth in the league in save percentage at like 938. And the Chicago Blackhawks are in second place. So it's unreal. It's 2009 all over again. Um, so from our viewer wall, Sheldon Lasham is watching in Calgary. He says, Roddy, that Shifley play was completely innocent, not dirty. Says the Flames fan. Troy Durrell says, same as Marchand. Marchand accomplishes a lot more and has a ring. So, hey, you guys can sit and defend the Kachucks all you want. I knew that you would, and I knew that it wouldn't be a popular comment. The fact of the matter is they are spot pickers. That's all. And if Flames fans are going to say none of what Matthew Kachuk does is intentional, then I hope you can sleep well at night. We're, we're, we're never going to agree. And you know what I realized? I was actually going to tweet this from my recovery account, and I still may. I've stopped arguing with people and just let them be wrong. And you wouldn't believe how happy I've become. That's great advice. Let them believe that Matthew Kachuk is this little angel. And maybe he is the heart and soul of the team. But I know this. I was telling Lynch in the car on the way up here. I just saw Ryan Leslie and uh, who was the other guy? Francis, Eric, Eric Francis. Francis, talking about a culture problem in Calgary. Heart and soul of a team with a culture problem. What more do I need to say? Uh, point five, how about those Raptors? I am in no way, shape, or form an NBA insider or analyst or pundit, but I do watch the games, and last night, I didn't watch the Raptors beat the Milwaukee Bucks. I had a lot on my plate, obviously, but they did win, 110-96, without Kyle Lowry, and incidentally, Toronto, did you see the graphic from TSN? 16-2 and two without Kyle Lowry. Not a good graphic <laughs> Well, <laughs> for you, Kyle Lowry. You want to talk about heart and soul of teams. Maybe if you want to talk about trading people away, maybe it's Kyle Lowry you want to trade away. I don't think you do. And by the way, how about Shaquille O'Neal, who we all love, part of the greatest panel, not in the NBA, in sports. And he didn't know that Spicy P's name was Pascal. Did you see that clip? Just knows him as Spicy P. Oh, he just knew him as Siakam. Yeah. He didn't know. His, oh, I didn't know what his first name was. That's hilarious. Unbelievable. And, you know, with Lowry, it's, it, maybe that shows a little bit, though, of what he means to this team and the guys in that locker room, that it's like when he's away, you're like, let's we do, better let's pick do it, it for him. Let's pick it up. Sure. And when he's there, it's like he'll take care of it. We don't have to work as hard. Uh, and I'll speed it up here before we bring in Solomon Elamimian and John Frenzy. But uh, the Scotties begin tonight. That is a bell-worthy ringing thing. Tonight, draw one on TSN from the Mark and McPhail Center in Calgary. We will be providing Scotties updates and coverage throughout the next week. Brought to you by Verge Agriculture, helping farmers plan and optimize their operations across every field. Visit vergeag.com to learn more today. They are out of Calgary. Tonight, it's Northern Ontario versus the Territories. Yukon versus Team Peterson, which is Wild Card 3. No relation. Alberta versus Nova Scotia. And Team Canada, that's Kerry Einerson out of Manitoba, representing Team Canada versus Team Zachary which is Team Wild Card 2. That's tonight. I think it's 8.30 Eastern, so 7.30 here Central tonight on TSN. Can't wait. Thank you, Verge Agriculture, for bringing the uh, Scotty's coverage to our viewers and to us. By the way, the rock star of the day yesterday for Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions was Saskatoon Blades head coach Mitch Love. And today's going to be – I might have to put the poll up. Who's going to be the – who is going to be the rock star of the day today? Solomon Elamimian, Cam Judge, Derek Moncrief, or John Frenzy? 
We'll talk more about the CFL stuff later, but we're going to talk about the great career of Solomon Elamimian and his retirement when we come back. See you in a while, dupes. We'll see you later. It's the RP Show. You're watching on Game Plus TV Network across all 10 provinces and 31 states, live daily on YouTube and Facebook, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tea time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. An original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday. Flame Tech is your industry leader in combustion services, and we do have... I don't know if it's breaking news, but Dave Neeler writing a column at TSN.ca this morning saying the CFL won't play if there are no fans. We'll debate that a little later on. Leading off an all-star list, and dare I say a Hall of Fame list of guests today that includes Derek Moncrief and Cam Judge, is Solomon Elamimian, the president of the CFL Players Association, but just passed a week past his announcement to retire from pro football after 10 illustrious seasons 
would have been 11 in 2020, and he has moved on to uh, life after football. And, Solly, I, I appreciate you joining us again. I'll say congratulations on that Hall of Fame career, but does it feel weird to say that you're retired? Are you used to it yet? Um, I, honestly, I'm not used to it, but I do um... – there are perks to it. You know, I can hit the snooze button a couple more uh, times now without rushing to the gym. So, you know, that's a pro, but um, it's definitely different uh, not to have that, um, that mindset of, you know, it, working out and having a purpose for the season. It's going to be weird for us to watch CFL football without you on the field. And I do want to talk about your career and so forth, but can, and we've all seen the tributes that are pouring out. I would say the most, the most unbelievable tribute came from the Rainbow Warriors in Hawaii, and I want to talk about your career there. But the decision to retire, what what led up to that decision? It could not have been easy last week. Yeah. Um, it, it was something that I thought about uh, for a couple months now, and it was just one where, you know, was just thinking about um, really in December and just saying, okay, you know, what's the goal for next season? What is it that I want to accomplish? And the more I thought about it, I really couldn't pinpoint you know, that goal, that motivation that's always kind of propelled me to, um, you know, Solomon maybe on the football field and, you know, more importantly, just, you know, other interests outside of football, you know, started, you know, taking, you know, taking hold. And honestly, I never thought that I'd be in a position where, um, you know, I had things going on outside of football that I really wanted to explore. And that was uh, really what came down to it. Um, leaving on my own terms, but obviously, you know, and honestly, just really in my mind having nothing to accomplish, nothing, um, you know, when I looked around, there's nothing that I wanted to do in terms of football. And, you know, I just thought it would be fair and the right time for me to move on and just pursue other things in life, things that really have been interesting me, um, you know, recently. And, you know, it's something that I'm happy about, something that my family, you know, supports me on. And, you know, I'm excited about the next chapter. Well, you know, then I hope you feel good then because you don't have anything left to accomplish. You've won a great cup, uh, first defensive player of the modern era to win the MVP of the league. Uh, record-setting career with BC. You got to play for Canada's team, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Solly. So I'm glad because very few guys get to leave on their own term. I could probably count it on one hand, to be honest with you. So good for you if you're at peace with it. We got Hall of Fame rider broadcaster John Lynch here. He's got some questions for you. What do you got, Frenzy? Solly, great to see you again. I loved you on the field out there. Um, I'm going to ask you the big question. Are we going to play football this year? It's bounced around so much. You're the guy who can probably give us a straight answer. And we've been looking for a summer. What do you say? Well, you know, that's a that's a good question. And obviously everybody wants to know. And, you know, from our standpoint, the PA, we're committed to having a, a safe 18-game season. I think, you know, what the commissioner said yesterday was very positive of, you know, they're also committed to having an 18-game season. So I know there's a lot of reports out there, speculations. But, you know, as long as we're working towards that goal, um, you know, good things will happen. And I'm a very optimistic person. I, I always believe that if you put your, you know, mind towards something, if you work together as, as a group, you know, there's ways to uh, accomplish that. And obviously there's hurdles. You know, we have to meet the certain requirements with the, um, you know, health and provincial uh, officials. Uh, and that's something that we're working on right now. And hopefully we can have a document on the return to play um, protocol, a safe one submitted by next week. So those are positive signs. And, you know, I just I would, um, you know, just, you know, uh, ask people just to remain optimistic and, and, and be encouraged. Solomon, just some comments from our viewers. Uh, guys, can you put, um, they just slipped off the screen. There's somebody coming in here. One from Micah Awe. The, say the GOAT, <laughs> my biggest mentor since entering the <laughs> CFL in 2017. Whoa. Congrats on a legendary career. We'll come back to that. Craig Campbell from the Hockey Hall of Fame in downtown Toronto says the CFL was a better league with Solomon Elamimian. What a fine player. Vancouver and Canada are better with you as a person by making your home here. And that is a great comment, Craig. And I'm asking, where are you settling, Solly? Where are you now and where do you plan to live yeah. in the years ahead? Yeah, so Vancouver's home. I'm actually in Vancouver right now, completing um, day 11 of my 14-day quarantine. I was in the States, uh, you know, the last couple of months. But um, I'm back in Vancouver. It's home for me. And, um, yeah, I, I've had nine years here. And um, one thing that kind of always stuck out to me um, was what Corey Banks told me. He was like, so I'll stay, try to stay in the same city as long as possible. And, you know, you'll find good things happen. And, you know, I took heed to that advice, and I've made some really great contacts here in Vancouver. And, 
you know, awesome friends here and, you know, great um, opportunities in the business world. So Vancouver will be home for the, um, for the near future. BC Lions, what's the situation with them? We've heard they're going to be in good shape for this year. We've heard they're not going to be in good shape. So, Sully, can you just sort of enlighten us on what the real situation is? Yeah, well, I really can't comment on the business side of things. But what I can say is, you know, being part of that um, organization, um, I think they have really competent people in charge there. You know, I look at Neil McAvoy, somebody that it's um, a BC line through and through who's been there, who's, um, you know, paid his dues. He has the opportunity to, um, you know, really show that he can, you know, build a team. Um, they brought uh, Ryan Rigmaiden back. He was over in uh, uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He's a really great um, evaluator of talent. And I think that's going to be important for the BC Lions to try to get good young talent in that market and, you know, where the, the fans can gravitate and, and, and get a hold of household names. You know, when I was playing uh, with the BC Lions, we always kept household names. Wally always kept a strong nucleus of a group of guys where, you know, you always kind of knew what the product was going to be. And I think they're off to a good start in um, bringing Ryan Rigmain back and also uh, Neil McAvoy. And, you know, can't forget G. Roy Simon, who is still, you know, part of that, um, you know, organization and plays an integral role in our organization. So, you know, you look at the personnel they have, I think they're in good hands. The GOAT, another GOAT, G. Roy, which – he literally is in terms of receptions. I love that man, and I can't wait to see all of them when we get back to CFL football and get out to the West Coast. Jack Fulton watching in Vulcan, Alberta says, congratulations, Solomon. We need more players to seek potential post-football careers while still playing. I commend you to finish with the game before the game is finished with you. Uh, Jeff, the Stamps fan, said Lou Pasagli is one of the few that left on his own terms. So I'm glad I asked that question, Sully, and I'm happy with your answer. But it's interesting when you say staying in one place because the players fought for the one-year contracts, and you hear us a lot from the fans going, and the teams don't like it either. It's like, how do we sell jerseys when we only have a guy for a year? Um, what would you tell young guys? That's kind of a slippery slope, eh? Well, I think you look at the system and how, you know, contracts, you know, you know, are made and, you know, Rod, obviously, you know, a little bit about that. Um, you know, sometimes a player commits to a team for two, three years, but the team doesn't commit to that player. And I would say the system needs to be one where, it, in, um, you know, it um, <clears throat> gives a player such a comfort that if I'm going to commit to that organization, the organization should commit to me. So I think, you know, we can do a better job of facilitating that. Um, but, you know, for me, it always worked for me. I played, you know, under, you know, Wally Bono, who, you know, pretty much told me, hey, Sally, as long as you do your job, you know, you'll be here. You know, we, we want to encourage player retention. And obviously we understand that football is, is a tough business, but, you know, you said uh, the fans and that's the number one consumer. But, you know, if you look at, you know, there's different ways I think that we can come about, you know, enticing players to stay in the same, t uh, same city. And I'm um, really having the team and, and the community commit to that player as well. Yeah, when you say that and you talk about Wally and I think about your great years in Vancouver, when you've got a great organization with leaders that you trust, the loyalty just comes naturally, you know? So that's kind of what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, loyalty, you know, comes – oh, yeah, the loyalty comes naturally. Just, you know, one point, you know, on that loyalty factor, I, you know, I told my Achilles in 2015, and I remember, you know, Wally said, hey, Sally, you know what, you're a big part of our organization. Obviously, you've – um, you, you got a significant injury that, you know, a lot of people don't come back from, but, you know, we're going to trust it, you know, knowing your mentality and how you approach things that you'll be, you know, the, the side that we all know. And, you know, he's, he's still committed to me. And that to me showed, um, you know, sense of loyalty where sometimes it's missing, but, you know, it's, it's hard to find nowadays. And I think that, you know, if you look at the system, there's ways to build continuity um, where you give incentives to teams to keep that same player in, in, in the city, right? From uh, producer Clark, he wants to know, of all the linebackers you played with, who would be your dream trio to start with on the field? You're in one spot. Who is beside you? And if I may, this crew with Moncrief and Judge today, that's a pretty good, <laughs> that's a pretty good trio. Uh, you could answer that. Uh, but of your career, yeah. what's your dream starting trio all time? Um, well, that's a tough question. Like I had a really good season with, um, with Cam Judge, Moncrief, great, great, great players, man. Very versatile. Um, you know, Cam is going to do great things in Toronto and, 
you know, Moncrief has, you know, NFL talent, they both do. Um, but just in terms of my career, obviously being BC for nine years, I have to go back to BC, right? And we all remember Team Up 100, um, you know, the star next to me, Adam Big Hill, how dominant, you know, we played together. We really pushed each other. We made the team better. Um, so Adam would definitely be, um, you know, besides me, playing at the Will linebacker spot. And to my left, um, I played with really good nickelbacks, uh, Luchas Purifoy, um, uh, Derek Moncrief, obviously, I just mentioned him. But I would go with Corey Banks. I would say Corey Banks. You know, Corey Banks was one of the best players I ever played with, versatile, um, communicated in, in the locker room and communicated on the field, and which is a great locker room personality. And he's someone that always made training camp go, eat, uh, go a little bit easier. You know, he always had the jokes and everything. Um, that made you kind of forget how tough training camp was. So I would say Corey Banks, myself, and Adam Big Hill. Those are some tremendous players and great guys, too. We've had them all on the show. Uh, I just got to ask you this about the Hawaii thing because it came across my uh, Google search, the, art, the, the Rainbow Warriors, the tribute they did to you. Did you – you obviously saw what they, what they put out when you announced your retirement. I mean, if you had a 144 tackle season in the CFL, you <laughs> ate up the CFL. You must have just dominated at Hawaii. What are your memories of playing there? Yeah, I had a great uh, time playing in Hawaii. Uh, you guys remember uh, Coach June Jones, who coached at the Hamilton Tiger Cats. He was my uh, head coach in Hawaii. I actually came to my house, um, you know, when I was at Crenshaw High School, and he actually recruited me, offered me a scholarship. My older brother at the time was uh, was going to Hawaii, and you know, Coach Jones was you know sitting in the front of my um in my living room and said, "Sally, I haven't seen film on you, but your older brother Abe is a beast." and you know, I trust, uh, you know, I trust his word on it and we want to offer you a scholarship and Hawaii really changed my life being an inner city kid from, you know, Los Angeles and, you know, kind of viewing the world in one way, uh, going to Hawaii and being able to kind of relax and find myself as a young man. I'm forever indebted uh, to that university and that program. And, you know, obviously I got strong ties there. My older brother uh, is the defensive backs coach uh, for Hawaii. So it's, it's a place that I, I consider home, great people great fans and you know it's been tremendous to get the the feedback and support from them uh through my career and also on my retirement outstanding well solomon the cfl's been richer for your involvement on the field we look forward to uh, your role continuing with the players association do not be a stranger please and uh appreciate the time today hey rod thanks for having me appreciate you thanks for all your support uh throughout the cfl and let's hope we have a a safe uh, 21 season. Appreciate you. Always. You betcha. Always. Solomon Elamimian from the Players Association uh, joining us days after his retirement. We're going to take a timeout. We've got Cam Judge ready to go from the Argos next. Sports update coming up and viewer takeover as well. It is a Flame Tech Football Friday. You're watching on Game Plus TV Network, YouTube and Facebook Live, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. Look like the pros. Shop Ultimate Fan Zone. NHL, NFL, MLB, CFL, NBA, and more. We have something for every sports fan. Autograph jerseys, prints, jersey stitching, custom framing, and collectibles. UFZ is your one-stop sports store offering fans official team gear. 
Check out Saskatchewan's Man Cave Corner on River and Main, downtown Moose Jaw, or visit us online at ultimatefanzone.ca. Built by fans for the fans. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now, back to the studio with Rob. All right, welcome back to a Flame Tech Football Friday, everybody. Hall of Fame writer, broadcaster John Frenzy is with me, and we're very excited to go out on video chat. And I, I thank him for waiting because they tell me he's in his Jeep in California. Cam Judge, if you did a Google search, you asked who was the most searched name in the CFL this week, it would be this guy right here, Cameron Judge, the newest member of the Argos. Cam, happy Friday, my man. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me out. It is nice to see you again, Cam, and see you smiling. And I loved your Zoom interview with the Toronto media yesterday where you said, Where's all the fuss coming from? This is the biggest news in the CFL that you signed with the Argos, and you seemed a little surprised that everybody has an opinion on it. Uh, I mean, I was I was expecting an opinion for sure. I mean, I was mostly just saying uh, about the salary cap. I mean, I'm sure there's bigger problems out there. I wasn't uh, – maybe the hobby thing might have been a little rude, but <laughs> – <laughs> but uh, I was just saying, you know, there's a, there's bigger issues to worry about. Like, uh, it's someone else's problem that they'll handle, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I, I was kind of expecting a little bit of uh, reaction, I guess you'd say. Well, you got it. And uh, you were at the top of most free agent boards as, as, as an available guy. And you did explain to the media yesterday what, why you picked Toronto. But maybe for the benefit of our viewers, which includes a lot of the Ryder Nation, you know, there's a... There's a tale being spun out there that you wanted to live in a big city. Was that part of it? I mean, what went into you choosing Toronto? Uh, I, I wouldn't really say that played a part. I mean, of course, Toronto's a wonderful city. It's a great city. But, uh, I mean, that, I'm there to play football at the end of the day. I mean, the rest of this stuff is just distraction, really. I mean, I come from L.A., but, I mean, I'm really not too crazy of like a big city guy, like going out and stuff. It's not really my thing. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm there to play football. And I was looking at the roster, talking to the coaches. You know, I got a good relationship with a lot of them, like Mike Davis, Murphy, obviously those guys. Uh, so it was a lot of the football stuff that brought me to the city. I mean, my goal, as I said, is to win a championship. And I feel they got a lot of good pieces where uh, if we put the work in, we do what we're supposed to do. The good things can happen. Did you enjoy yourself here in Saskatchewan? I thought you were a great football player. I want to, I want to bring you back here, actually. <laughs> but uh, did you enjoy your two years here? Oh, man, I loved it. That, playing there was like nothing else, man. That game day feeling is uh, that's definitely a hard thing to replicate if you can, if, if impossible, you know. So 
it's definitely I'm gonna definitely miss playing there, miss the fans and stuff. I, it was a wonderful two years I had playing there, and I'm I'm forever thankful for them giving me the opportunity to continue my career there and be able to do what I do. What is it about Toronto? One of our viewers has asked this, and I'll spin it. Chris Robinson says, what is Cam looking forward to the most playing in Toronto? I feel a real exciting vibe with what's going on with the football team. Talk about moving to that new city, playing at BMO Field with this group of guys. What has you most excited about all of that? Uh, I think what has me most excited is all, all the talk right now. You know, a lot of people say it's the, the paper championship happening right now and stuff like that. So I'm excited to go there and put in the work and really come out as a strong team that, you know, is, can be a contender. So I'm, I'm really excited for that because I feel a lot of people aren't buying into it, aren't believing in what we could be capable of. So I feel like it's just going to light a fire under me for the whole offseason going into the season. Charles and Hughes, about factor, and you're going there. Uh, yeah, me and me and Charleston, we had some good talks, you know. Uh, yeah, he was definitely trying to get me over there for, since the moment he knew he was going over there. And yeah, I mean him, him. Uh, yeah, he he definitely helped. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, from from of our viewers, Jim Vancha says, "Show me the money." Nelson Hackowitz says, you had said the Riders were impatient and moved on too quick. Had Jeremy been more patient, would you still be a Rider? I'm sure you're getting questions like that regularly. Uh, you know, I was I was definitely still had a decision to make, that's for sure. But, uh, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I get it. Hold on, let me think about that before I say something. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, there was definitely a chance of me going back to Saskatchewan. I mean, as I said, I love playing there. and But at the end of the day, I, I understood the risk I was taking, and I, I have no ill will or anything towards anyone over there. I mean, they did what they had to do, and isn't that what we all got to do? So, I mean, it is what it is at the end of the day. I'm just excited I can keep playing football. Well, one day the fans might realize that the players are their own personal businesses and you do have to do what's best for you. And speaking of that, you did have the workout with the Raiders. I'm fascinated to ask you what went on because I know guys that have worked out for over two hours for NFL teams. I know guys that have worked out for five minutes for NFL teams. What was yours like with the Raiders? Uh, we worked out. I had to work out for about, it was probably like 20, 25 minutes maybe 30 like so 20 to 30 in that range and it was just like a lot of drops and stuff like that you know seeing how i move which i, I felt i honestly did pretty good uh, i felt the feedback was pretty good in that area but i, I just weighed in a little light and they're looking for something a little a little heavier than that who were the uh the personnel that were around was was coach chucky uh present did you see john gruden uh, who who worked you out uh, I, I got worked out by the linebacker coach, and uh, I, I met most of the personnel. I actually didn't have a chance to meet uh, Gruden, but uh, I saw him around on the sideline for a little bit during the workout. But, uh, yeah, I met most of the personnel, though. Do you, have, do you think, Cam, there's a chance that if you light it up with the Argos, because you're still in the prime of your career, that the NFL might come knocking again? You just have to prove it with your play on the field, or, or have you moved on from that? Uh, I mean, I, I think there's still an opportunity to be had. I mean, I'm, I just turned 26, so I feel like I'm, I'm just getting ready to enter the prime of my career. But, I mean, I'm, uh, as I said on uh, with the Argos media yesterday, you know, I'm just focused on where I am now, what I'm doing now, and the rest of everything else will just take care of itself. Good for you. Yep. All right, Frenzy, one more. What do you got? Jeff Singleton, Mel with the Eagles, former Stan Peter. I'm, I'm sure you Alex know him. Singleton. Alex Singleton has made it with the Eagles. Uh, you're sort of the same build as him. Did that have any go any thought going into it when you were going down to the to a tryout with the East, with the uh, uh, Raiders? Uh, yeah, I mean a little bit. Yeah, Alex is a guy I, I work out with Alex, so I see him pretty often, you know. And he's definitely a, a motivate, a inspirational figure to me. You know, he's a guy I played against in high school, played against in Canada, and so seeing him play in the NFL is just amazing, you know, especially how well he's doing. So. Guys like him, Slug, Free, you know, all those guys motivate me uh, to get to that next level because, you know, I see what they did. I see how they're doing, and it's just it's motivational. Cam, you're no smaller than Alex Singleton, are you? Uh, you know, he's, he's a little bit heavier than I am. You know, I, I, I was looking yesterday, kind of looking at us, too. 
yeah, yeah. He, he's he's got a couple pounds on me. You know that guy be puts in the work. Guy, but what about what yeah. about height? Uh, he, uh, we're about the same height. I'd say he might he might be a little bit taller, like no more than an inch. I'm not yeah, sure. That, that's what I thought. I've been around you both, and I'm like, Alex is no monster. Like, if he can do it, you can do it. So, well, there you go. You got you got a fire, Cam. Yeah, something to play for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's go. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, I, I see him putting the work every day. You know, it's it's he's his work ethic is something is is different. You know, he's so he's a guy. I'm trying to I'm trying to match his uh, workouts, match his you know his drive and stuff, and maybe we'll end up in similar places. That's how you do it, man. Motivating each other. I love to hear it. Well. Hey, our, our man Vic Palma is watching in Las Vegas. He says, great interview. He's a, he's a Jones guy. He was a scout on the staff when you were drafted by the Riders. So, Cam, I'm glad to see everything's going so well. Congrats on the new deal. Can't wait to get you on the field. And uh, all the best for you, man. Keep in touch. I appreciate it, Rod. Thank you for all the support, man. And thank you for having me out. You Still betcha. love to have you here. <laughs> he's gone, Lynch. He's gone. Get over it. Cam Judge joining us from California, the Toronto Argonauts. When we come back, a sports update and more. Derek Moncrief coming up next hour from the Los Angeles Rams right here in the bunker. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday. You're watching on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event. Event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina.
Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. All right, welcome back, everybody. Just ahead of a sports update, we've got a comment here from Jack Fulton watching in Vulcan, Alberta. He says it's Riders Football Friday. No, it's not. It's former Rider Cameron Judge, now the Toronto Argonauts, Solomon Elamimian, former Rider, now retired, and Derek Moncrief of the L.A. Rams. And Lynch, I'll give this stage to you. <laughs> You're still not happy with this Cameron Judge thing. Nope. He's just a too good a football player. Once again, you can't lose stars like that, Rod. You're sick and tired of me saying that, but losing with uh, Charleston Hughes and now the other guy, Cameron, Judge and him were the two stars of our defense last year. Great football player, made big games, won a game against Edmonton by himself with a big interception. A leader all the way. You give him the money. Okay, guys, you give him the money. Winnipeg with Wade Miller and Ken, whatever, Ken Wallace here, they do the thing. What they do for their first-string offense and first-string defense, they pay them well. Maybe too high in somebody's minds, but they pay them well, and the second and third people, second and third stringers don't get paid as well. But it's worked out very well because the top stars are, are happy. You can't make everybody happy. It can't be an even Steven for everybody. I, I don't think Jeremy O'Day has gone over that yet. He, he wants to make it nice and everybody happy. You can't do that because, yeah, the second and third stringers are upset that they're not getting the big salaries, but... Go out there and play when you get a chance. Okay. So, to the sports update, the world's most famous and prestigious women's curling national championship is being staged under unfamiliar circumstances, but the stakes will be very familiar. The Scotties Tournament of Hearts begins tonight inside a strictly enforced, safe, no-fans bubble at the Mark and McPhail Center in Calgary. The winning team will qualify for the Tim Hortons curling trials presented by AGI next November in Saskatoon where Canada's four-player men's and women's teams for the 2020 Winter Games will be decided. The winning team also will play at the 2022 Scotties in Thunder Bay as Team Canada in addition to pocketing first place prize money of $100,000. Draw one tonight is at 8.30 Eastern on TSN and our Scotties coverage is brought to you by Ver agriculture the curling report helping farmers plan and optimize their operations across every field visit vergeag.com to learn more today austin matthews scored his 15th and 16th goals to pat his nhl lead and had two assists to help the league leading toronto maple leafs thump the last place ottawa senators 7-3 at scotia bank arena last night ryan hartman and kevin fiala scored 38 seconds apart in the first period Capo Kakadin stopped 16 shots, and the Minnesota Wild defeated the Anaheim Ducks 3-1. And Capo Kako and Artemi Panarin scored in the shootout to give the Rangers a 3-2 victory over the Philadelphia Flyers. Norman Powell scored 29 points. Pascal Siakam had 27. And the Toronto Raptors beat Milwaukee 110-96 to hand the Bucks their fifth consecutive loss in the NBA. The sports update for Ballers Rec Room. They can handle all your food and fun needs. Visit their website at ballersrecroom.com and for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. John Frenzy sticking around into hour two. Derek Moncrief of the LA Rams will be with us. Way more viewer comments coming up in the viewer takeover. But I want to mention that the Telemiracle 5050 is live now. You can purchase your tickets at telemiracle5050.ca. It's in support of the Kinsman Foundation. They're helping people every day improve their quality of life and independence through gifts of mobility equipment and medical travel assistance. What do nice guys do, Lynch? Manage the Kinsman Club. They run the Kinsman Club. <laughs> well, this right. is your chance to support them. <laughs> One ticket for $20, five tickets for $20, 20 tickets for $100, or 100 tickets for $250. All tickets, all proceeds going to the Kinsman Foundation. Order yours, telemiracle5050.ca. And uh, we'll make the draw on Friday, February 26th. Stick around after the break. Hour two coming up with Derek Moncrief here on Game Plus. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, 
Give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. An original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain from PO creation to expediting your shipments all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. He's covering everything that matters to you. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Tune in live Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to noon to catch the show live and be a part of the action. Take control by commenting live and sharing the show with your friends. John Murphy, the assistant general manager of the Toronto Argonauts. Um, what can you tell the fans about Cameron Judge? All of us agreed that he was the best player, you know, on the board, and that was very exciting. You know, from what I know right now, you know, his thing was, uh, I want to concentrate on this NFL workout. So for him to have a shot of working out for the Raiders, uh, I think it's something very important for him at this stage of his career. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It absolutely is. Welcome to... Canada's daytime sports talk show, everybody. Welcome inside the bunker. This is what we're calling the second half kickoff because we go to hour two. Hall of Fame writer, broadcaster John Frenzy is with us here, and his his appearances are brought to you by Wheaton Kia. You can find them in North Regina at the corner of Albert and Avonhurst. So we'll delve right into it. Uh, last hour, we had two very big names in football. We had Solomon Elamimian, the president of the CFL Players Association. They sent me this shirt here last week. I thought I'd throw a blazer on over top of it. And Solly gave us a great interview on his CFL career and what's next. And then Cameron Judge was with us. One of the top free agents available in this free agent class signed with the Toronto Argonauts and he can't really believe all of the furor and hubbub that's gone around it. So I'm going to get to the viewer comments. Remember this, Lynch. One, William May says, ask Frenzy if Larry Dean or any other linebacker plays great. Will he forget about Cameron Judge? Because Lynch is so upset that Cameron Judge is one of many all-stars on defense the Rough Riders have lost in free agency. Well, Larry, is there anything that would make you forget about Cam Judge? Larry Dean's a great middle linebacker. I think Larry Dean could make me forget about Cameron Judge. Possibility. It's not probability, but a possibility. I love Cameron Judge. Can you put up the comment, gents, if it's not too far gone, from William May about Cam Judge's comment on the negotiations with the Rough Riders. Would you mind doing that? And while you find that, 
Oh, here it is. Cameron Judge said it all. O'Day got too anxious and brought in someone else, and I'm sure Charleston Hughes had a lot to do with him going to Toronto. The Argos are like the Miami Heat. Not one, not two, not three, not four championships. The Stars are all arriving in one place, and it's the Toronto Argonauts, and it's got the other eight teams upset, and the Argos, uh, I think, are enjoying that. But anyways... It is a Flame Tech Football Friday. That's why we're talking so much football. But here in the quick six, we've got curling and hockey as well. So hit it, please. Director Jordan. Please and thank you. Uh, YouTube commenter Fear the the Conspiracy writes in and he says, Hey, it's Rod Peterson looking sharp. I don't normally throw on a blazer. I'm willing to do it regularly. Oh, you look it, great. Yeah, if yeah. you think it's worthwhile. You look great. My, uh, my clothier, Colin O'Brien Man Shop, would be very happy if I did. But that's the poll question today. What should Rod wear <laughs> as host of the RP show? A suit coat like I'm donning now with a CFLPA long sleeve T-shirt underneath or a bunny hug, which the rest of Canada calls a hoodie? 72% say, go back to the bunny hug, which is a Saskatchewan term for a hoodie. So that's probably what I'll do come Monday. And yes, we are originating from the sweatpants capital, Regina, Saskatchewan. I get so many comments. More came in today. It's mind-blowing that you're from Regina when you cover all these great NHL topics and NFL. There's nothing mind-blowing about it. Our roots in the NHL go back over 100-plus years. It's the heartbeat of the uh, Canadian Football League. There's nothing mind-blowing about it. But thank you for tuning in from all across the continent. Okay, quick six show topics. The commissioner of the Canadian Football League, Randy Ambrosi, said yesterday in an interview with the Canadian press, we're going to play in 2021. It got me very excited. And then this morning, Dave Naylor of TSN, who speaks really on behalf of the league and the owners, wrote a column where he said he does not feel the CFL will will play if there's no fans. I, for weeks, have gone out on the limb and just said... I think they'll play with or without fans because they have to. I have faith in the leadership of this league that they'll do the right thing for the game, for the league, for the players, for the coaches, for the staff, for the fans. And Naylor's saying that that faith isn't going to be rewarded. If they can't play with fans, they're not playing at all. I went and read the article. So it's another kick in the gut on a, on a daily up and down roller coaster. Lynch. What do you think of this event in the last 24 hours? Larry Ambrose is telling us. Randy Ambrose. Randy Ambrose is telling us we're not going to be ready for uh, June 12th with the Riders playing at Edmonton and a week later, Ottawa here. We're going to be playing Labor Day. The first game of our schedule, our 10-game schedule, will be Labor Day. It will be a 10-game schedule. We'll have the playoffs. Yes, they'll go deep into December. Maybe a week. Lynch, I don't care what he's saying. What do you think's going to happen? I think he'll do it. I think they'll do it. But it'll be the first week of September, Labor Day week. Okay. Uh, Point two. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. Okay, so I move on. So point two. A lot of negativity yesterday coming out of Ambrose's comments. Five or six players that I saw on Twitter basically saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." We heard it all last year. I had. A league insider, a staffer, texts me and say, did he just dust off the quotes from last year? That's all he said last year. And they didn't play. So that's my point, too, is the negativity regarding Ambrosi's comments. And this is what it's come down to. Talk's cheap. Talk is cheap. We want to see the details of how you're going to play. Is it too much to ask? I don't think so. They have to play this year. If they don't, the league's football's finished in Saskatchewan. The league's done. It's done. They've got to play. They're committed themselves. Viewer Nelson Nakowicz says it is terrible that the league and their broadcast rights holder are contradicting each other. Yeah. That's our take on that. What's the broadcaster saying? TSN is saying they won't play without fans. That's Dave Naylor. Yeah, well. Point three, Carson Wentz fallout. We've dug a little more digging into this, and while we all think that Carson Wentz potentially is washed up, the Indianapolis Colts clearly do not. We'll get into this more with... Derek Moncrief, when he joins this next segment, Los Angeles Rams defensive back and linebacker. But, uh, hey, this guy finished third in voting for NFL MVP in 2018. He started every single game as a rookie in 2017. He was a second overall pick. That's why they've given him $33 million a year in Philadelphia. And just because they're sick of him doesn't mean he's washed up. Took him to the Super Bowl. Took, well, two no, years ago. Nick Foles did. No, to get there. 
He took gas, but he didn't win it. No, he didn't win. I know what you're saying. Moving on, point four, because this is a Canadian show after all. There are other sports. My NHL leftovers from Thursday night's action. Some things dawned on me while I was watching the Leafs and the Sens, and one is my first leftover. Keith Kachuk was not a spot picker like his sons, Brady and Matthew. And what I've realized is that a lot of people, even in this country, don't even understand what the term spot picker means. They don't know. It's a term from deep within hockey vernacular, which is they pick their spots. They pick a spot when their opponent is vulnerable. What made me think about it was Brady Kachuk is cross-checking a leaf in the back of the head after the whistle last night. And I'm like, why is he being allowed to do this? His dad never played that way. And then I thought about Matthew Kachuk ending Mark Shifley's playoffs last year. Oh, it was an accident. Falling on Jack Campbell, the Leafs goalie, this season. He hasn't played since. Oh, it was an accident. At some point, the NHL is going to realize these aren't accidents. Keith Kachuk never played this way. So I texted a teammate of Keith's from the 90s, and I said, have I forgotten the way Keith Kachuk played? I don't remember him being this dirty or being a spot picker. And the guy wrote me back and said he wasn't. But back in the 90s, you would have had to pay for this. Now you don't. There's nobody running around extinguishing guys like Brady and Matthew Kachuk. And until there is, they're going to continue to play that way. So the fan, the overall officiating in the NHL so far this year has been very weak. They're letting them get away with murder. Uh, da, da, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to get into officiating because it depends on what side of the cookie you're on. Mm-hmm. Anyways, my other leftovers were that Sam Steele has arrived. Beautiful goal, backhand goal for the Anaheim Ducks last night. Unfortunately, they lost 3-1, and it would be nice if the rest of his teammates showed up, even though Sam Steele's arrived, the former, 20 years the old former captain of the Regina Pats. Lynch, can I get through these? Okay. The other one, who do the Calgary Flames give up to acquire Jack Eichel from the Buffalo Sabres? Because the Sabres have lost three in a row, and it would appear the bottom's falling out there. Things are raging in Calgary, I see, on Sportsnet last night that they've got culture issues within the dressing room. That's what the media is saying. They're going to need a shakeup. Jack Eichel's going to want out of Buffalo. What are we waiting for? And point five of my leftovers is that the LA Kings are both very young and also very old. Dustin Brown, Jonathan Quick, Drew Doughty on the old end, and on the young end, Jared Anderson Dolan, Austin Wagner. they got a good young crew there. They sure do. But as I learned from Chris Jones, it doesn't matter what the makeup is of what the sport is. If you've got old teams, old players, they get hurt. If you've got young players, they get injured. You want guys right in that middle, late 20s, sweet spot in the prime of their careers. they got the mistakes out of the way, and they're not getting hurt yet. So with the L.A. Kings, I would be moving those older guys now and start to rebuild. What's the holdup? Uh, moving on, point five of the quick six show topics here in our second half kickoff. The Raptors won again, Lynch. Yeah, I know. Did you watch it? At five straight? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I did. And well, and they sent the Bucks to their fourth consecutive loss in Milwaukee, oh. and the, rap, the score was 110-96. And they did it without Kyle Lowry, yeah, well, who's that, supposed to be the heart and soul of the Toronto Raptors. Are, are they two and two and twenty-five with him out there? They're sixteen and two without him. Without, but well, you're close. That's amazing. Sixteen and two without him. <laughs> so, so we're trying to examine that and say, is Kyle Lowry not needed by the Raptors, or when he's out, does everybody else pick him up? Pick it up. I think so. And that's what I would like to think because Kyle I think Lowry, he's a hell of a player. By the time he's done, he might go down as the greatest Raptor ever. Yeah. But they can win without him, clearly. And point six, the Scotties Tournament of Hearts opens up tonight. And we will be covering it. Of course, it's Canada. It's curling. We'll be doing it for Verge Agriculture. That's who's bringing us, bringing you our Scotties coverage. So draw one tonight. It's Northern Ontario versus Northwest Territories. Yukon versus Team Wildcard 3. That's Team Peterson. Alberta versus Nova Scotia. And Team Canada, Kerry Einerson out of Manitoba, representing Team Canada as the defending champion, up against Team Wildcard 2, that's Zacharias. I know it's a little confusing. Let us sort it all out for you. Draw one tonight, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. TSN has it. And again, Verge Agriculture brings you our Scotty's coverage, helping farmers plan and optimize their operations across every field. Visit Verge Ag to learn more today. 
I do want to mention that yesterday's rock star of the day for Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions was Mitch Love, the head coach of the Saskatoon Blades and assistant coach of Team Canada's World Junior Team. That was yesterday's rock star of the day. Today, we got some competition, Lynch. <laughs> That's right. You got some competition. A couple of guys just came in here, eh? That's right. Both of them look Derek really good. Derek Moncrief of the LA Rams. He's here. He's looking fresh. He's looking lean. He's <laughs> going to be in here next block. Last hour, we had Solomon Elamimian and Cameron Judge on the show. And right. did they drop some bombs <laughs> on the show? So I think we're going to actually put up a poll at the end of the show, and you can vote for the rock star of the day. But no matter what, Derek Moncrief and Kirby, his family Kirby's here, yep. they will leave both with rock star hats. Kirby like can really dance, let me tell you that. You can dance? Yep. You can dance, Kirby? I don't know. Let, let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby's here from Suds Full Service Car Wash. And I got to say, now's the time to wash your car. And here's why. It's not minus a million so if you go and get your car washed, the doors freeze shut. Although that's not a problem at Suds because they wipe the door jams. But right here in this sweet spot, Lynch, minus teens, wash, and it'll last for days. Right, Kirby? Right? Days. You can say days. days. <laughs> yeah, so you can go get your uh, get your vehicle washed this Kirby weekend. Kirby is a rag. R-A-G-G. -G. Really a great guy. Really a great guy. He's a winner all the way. Sure is. Uh, what else, Lynch? Oh, the poll question today. A very rarely... Do I dress up for the show? And for a farm kid like me, this is dressing up today. But yeah, good. You look really Well, the good. CFLPA sent me this shirt. Yeah. And okay. I thought I'd throw a blazer on over top of it. So we're asking the viewers, what should the host of this program wear for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center? What should I be wearing? A suit coat or a bunny hug? Yeah, which is a that. Saskatchewan term for a hoodie. It's now, what, 76% on Facebook say, Surprise. go back to the bunny hug. 82% say... On Twitter, say the same. So CFLPA, you might have to stick one in the mail. <laughs> Lynch, we're going to bring Kreef in next. So what's your final word on if the CFL plays this year? What do you think about the events of the last 24 hours? I'm disappointed. I think they're going to play, though, because they're determined to. And I say Labor Day, 10-game schedule, Grey Cup. With fans. With fans. Grey Cup a week before Christmas. Beautiful. John Lynch's appearances are brought to you by Wheaton Kia. You can find them in North Regina at the corner of Albert and Avonhurst. We'll break and we'll be back with Derek Moncrief in the bunker from the Los Angeles Rams. You're watching a Flame Tech Football Friday. Flame Tech is your industry leader in combustion services on Game Plus TV network across all 10 provinces in 31 states. Live daily on YouTube and Facebook and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event. Event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> 
look like the pros. Shop Ultimate Fan Zone, NHL, NFL, MLB, CFL, NBA, and more. We have something for every sports fan. Autographed jerseys, prints, jersey stitching, custom framing, and collectibles. UFZ is your one-stop sports store offering fans official team gear. Check out Saskatchewan's Man Cave Corner on River and Main, downtown Moose Jaw, or visit us online at ultimatefanzone.ca. Built by fans for the fans. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Oh yeah, he's back! Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is a Flame Tech Football Friday, and we're very excited. I think Derek Moncrief of the Los Angeles Rams think we're overplaying this a little bit. <laughs> but you are our first NFL player we've had right here in the bunker, Derek. So I say... Yeah. Welcome. How are you, sir? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. There's a lot of people that probably say, why is an NFL player <laughs> hanging out in the polar vortex of Saskatchewan, <laughs> Canada? But this yeah. is where you're going to spend your offseason? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just training and uh, got my going to distance brand going out right now. So, uh, you know, just trying to enjoy the scene right now. And uh, I'm glad to be back. All right. John, 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 John. The interview is going. So coming back from your first season, with the Los Angeles Rams after how many here? Three with the Saskatchewan yeah, Rough Riders? Years, yeah. So it was an interesting year in L.A. Yeah. Can you take me through it from signing <laughs> to re-signing? Because you got a yeah. new deal, right? Yeah. Take yeah. me through it if you don't mind. Yeah, I had, the, uh, I had the tryout or the workout at the end of camp. Did great with the workout. They loved me. Uh, and then we went from there with the pandemic and everything every day with the testing and just the day in and day out grind. Um, it was a little frustrating at first because I've been starting for three years, right? So to come and, um, you know, uh, watch every Sunday, you practice all week, that was pretty tough. But I finally got my crack, the Miami week. And, uh, you know, I just tried to make the most of it. Which was like, what, week four, 13, 14? Yeah. It was well into the season, as I yeah, recall. Yeah, I think it was my, like week eight or nine. Was it eight? Okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Just seemed like we were waiting for a long time, eh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you finally got that game of Miami. And I called that the Ryder alumni game because you were going up against Sam Aguavin of the Dolphins. Yeah, yeah. And this is a funny story. We had Aguavin <laughs> on here on Wednesday, and he said he was trash-talking you the yeah. night before in the morning of via text, and yeah. you were ignoring him. <laughs> Tell me about that. All week, I, I had to be locked in. Uh, I knew it was like one opportunity, you know. I knew I knew just had to come in and try to dominate as much as I can. And, uh, you know, I talked to him after the game. <laughs> <laughs> and you got some photos, some great photos, oh, right, yeah, yeah, on did. the sidelines. Yeah. But that was a wild game, yeah. too. Your quarterback kept giving the yeah. ball up quite a bit, as I recall. Yeah. And he's not your quarterback anymore. But what do you remember about that game? Oh, man, from start to finish, uh, everything was happening so – kind of fast to me because I haven't played in a long time so uh happened very fast I just had a great time really you know what yeah. I mean? I'm just trying to enjoy the moment 
But uh, they was a good team, though. They got the best of us that day. I got to tell you, it's yeah. so great to see you again, oh, by the yeah, way. And everybody yeah, says yeah. it's such a great defense, one of the best defenses in the NFL. Yeah. And you're a part of it. What is it? Aaron Donald, obviously, but he's yeah. not. He's just one guy. Why is that defense so great? I think it's the chemistry. Um, to win, to be a winning team in the NFL, you have to be together uh, because everybody's talented. You know what I mean? So I think it's the chemistry and the time being spent day in, day out. Um, just sacrificing for your teammates for the betterment to win a championship. So, yeah. It's sad, though, that yeah. your NFL debut would yeah. come in uh, Hard Rock Stadium with nobody there. You should have a full stadium, right, yeah. Kirby? And yeah. all the pomp and circumstance <laughs> and your family there. Yeah. Florida had a few fans. Yeah. But, I mean, talk about your NFL debut. Did you feel like you were in the league? Because it was an empty stadium. That's a shame. It was some fans in there. It was pumping now. Had, they had some was crowd it? noise. Yeah, yeah. It was a few fans in there. Uh, it felt like an NFL debut. Okay, that's uh, good. Yeah, I was just locked in, man. It was a dream come true, and uh, really, I can't wait for the next season to come around. Yeah, well, yeah. I do understand. I had that talk yesterday with yeah. uh, John Paddock. You wouldn't know him, but a former yeah. NHL coach, and he said once the game starts – yeah, you do focus on the game. Yeah. If you're looking in row five, you're gonna get your block knocked off, <laughs> <laughs> right? So Definitely. there's that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Well, I so <clears throat> I guess I should get to the viewer questions too. By the way, uh, well, he, well, from Taylor Soli, he says, "Hey, Derek, what's ad like? Let's go Rams." I think he's asking about your brand that you're wearing. Let's talk yeah. about that. By the yeah. way, you got a clothing yeah. line, and how's that going? It's going pretty good. Uh, called going the distance uh actually my girlfriend helped me out with this mm. um it came to pass i was just talking about it one day and uh just came up with it and my distance uh, my brain is called going the distance and i just want to inspire the world whether you play sports whether you want to be an actor or whatever uh, just want to inspire them you know because you can do anything you put your mind to it you can, and you've proven sure. that. Yes, As sir. has Sam, by the way. He just yeah. doesn't have a clothing line. Yeah. Tell, <laughs> tell me about your – you said you've got the Rider edition yeah. on here, yeah. which is white with green lettering. What all do you have? Uh, the Rider edition, of course. Um, I got the Prattville edition, what, where I'm from. It's, uh, is that like a burgundy yeah, edition? Yeah, I saw burgundy. that. Maroon and white, yeah, yeah. burgundy. Um, I got the all-black legendary edition. Um, I have the L.A. edition, which is um, blue and yellow. And, yeah. Pretty much. Who's yeah. uh, who's behind this? Uh, me and my girlfriend. Right. Just putting it together. Well, you're you are linked up with an entrepreneurial family yeah, over yeah, there, as, yeah. you, <laughs> as you know. Right. They kind of know a thing about or two about yeah. this yeah. clothing lines and business. So, yeah. where can people look at your line of clothing and and purchase it? DerekMoncrief.com, um, and also my Instagram, um, going the distance brand, Facebook, GTD. Um, Twitter, you can click the link in my bio, and uh, everything's going out. Um, and also, we got the Derek Moncrief Foundation, where we're gonna give back um, to every inner city, uh, international missions. So we're just gonna be a positive life in the world. Good for you. Well, so, I always knew that you were a super dude. And uh, yes, sir. by the way, the question was: it's a yeah. lower. He said AD, and it looked like ad, like advertisement. Oh, yeah. He meant Aaron Donald. <laughs> if you'd have yeah. capitalized that, yeah. they all want to know what Aaron Donald's like, the baddest dude in the NFL. What's he, what's he like? Oh, man. Cool, laid-back demeanor. But when he's in between the lines, he's a different, he's a different animal. Something I've never seen before besides myself. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's a great dominant player. Uh, he pays attention to the details. He dominates even when he's in walkthroughs and, of course, the games. But his work ethic and his practice habits are, you know, uh, at the top. Well, you sure. know, there are some yeah. polls I've seen that say he's the best player in the NFL. Yeah. Forget about Mahomes. Forget about yeah. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. say Aaron Donald's the best player in the National Football League. If you were yeah. starting a team, would, be, would he be the guy you'd sign first? Got to have him. Yeah. First pick. Yeah, well, he plays at that yeah. position where it all starts. Right, right, <laughs> right. And he's athletic, too, so. It, obviously, yeah. he must move great for a big man. Yeah, he can catch. He can do everything. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stacy Champagne, a viewer, just joined us, says, where does one get this clothing? I'll say it again. DerekMoncrief.com, I think, mm -hmm. would be the best way to go about it. But you can also find him on 
all social media platforms. Are you going to change that Twitter handle, by the way, Hot Boy Showman, which goes back to high school? <laughs> Or Never. No. I got to keep it. It's classic, man. It's, it's not a thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so catchy. You know what I mean? Everybody asks me, like, what does it mean? You know, but uh, it's a cool name. Um, yeah, you can't. Friends. You can't change. Yeah, it I now, can't. Right. Can't. Definitely. At yeah. Hot Boy Shoe Man. Yeah. What was it? Grade nine. You started that? Yeah. Yeah. Think ninth grade, ninth, tenth grade. You're probably shocked that I remember this stuff. <laughs> you got good memory. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> one of my few talents. <laughs> but Derek, I do. I do have to say this. Yeah. You said you missed the interview with Sam McGuavin. He yeah. actually broke down yeah. in the interview talking about his road to the NFL. Yeah. It's not like yours has been any easier. Yeah. Like, would you mind telling our viewers the, the sweat and tears you've put into this? <sighs> Man, uh, to start off even back from high school. Uh, you go back as far as you want. Yeah, I can go back as far. Uh, yeah. From Prattville. Um, man, I didn't qualify for a major university, Division One. I was going to go to Alabama. I was committed to Southern Miss, but it didn't happen. So I went to junior college for a year and a half, graduated, number one safety in the country, All-American, um, went to Auburn University, didn't play there. So I transferred to Oklahoma State, I had the red shirt, uh, paid for school the first semester, and then I earned a scholarship. And then I played the following year, went undrafted, um, I was crushed, no lie, I was crushed. Then I got to work out in Dallas uh, with Chris Jones and the Riders. How did you find out about that? Uh, just uh, my agent at the time and, um, and this guy, uh, he, was, he knew Coach Jones okay. really well. And uh, that went great. Got up here in the training camp and you know, the rest was history on that part. And you know, now I'm here. Yeah, well you were, you were a tremendous player from the moment you stepped on the field. Yeah. But I often wonder, because I think yeah. Sam McGuavin said he saw the ad online somewhere yeah. that yeah. the Riders were yeah. having a tryout camp. Yeah. And like you say, the rest is history. But would you yeah. have gone to the National Football League if you had not come to the Canadian Football League? <sighs> Probably not. I mean, it's the, I got the opportunity to you know, showcase and develop. Uh, I learned so much. I got so much experience um, just playing at different positions and just learning about the game and, and how to be a pro. Um, Coach Jones taught me a lot, man, and I really appreciate him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, he will be back in the CFL yeah. maybe sooner than later. Yeah. We've got a minute to go before a break. Are you okay to stick with us for another segment? Yes, sir. And we'll answer all the viewer questions. Oh, good. But Alan Lee wants to know. He's our intern, the Asian sensation. Yeah, yeah. Alan, hey, Mr. Moncrief. <laughs> What's your opinion on your new quarterback, Matthew Stafford? Man, great quarterback. Uh, his body of work speaks for itself. Uh, his resume, man, uh, I just can't wait to see him play. Uh, that guy, you know, they didn't have winning seasons there, but he's finally got the opportunity to be with a winning team. Uh, great defense. Just can't wait to, you know, host that uh, Lombardi trophy up. Oh, you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be missing yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah. We'll be right back with Derek Moncrief again, our first ever NFL player joining us right here in the bunker. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday. We've got a sports update coming up and viewer takeover. All of your questions will field for Derek next. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV Network, Facebook and YouTube Live, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. 
At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Building a deeper connection with our fans by putting them in the show. It's a new era of sports talk. The Rod Peterson Show airs from 10 to noon, Monday to Friday on Facebook Live. Join the conversation today and tune in. Online, on your phone, at home, at work. Follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. And subscribe on YouTube for all the content you want to watch. Don't wait. Do it right now. Laid back and kicking it. Let's head back to the studio. Here's Rod. All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm going to jump into a sports update here. More with Derek Moncrief, and then we're throwing the Swiss League hockey live on Game Plus, but the rest of you watching on YouTube and Facebook and uh, listen live will stay with us until the top of the hour. The Toronto Raptors look to exact revenge on the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight after a loss to Minnesota in Tampa, Florida last weekend. The Raptors get another crack at the lowly T-Wolves tonight. Since that loss, Toronto's won two in a row, both against the Bucks. Battle of Alberta on tap tonight. The Flames host the Oilers in NHL play. The Flames are tied for fifth in the North, two points back of the Winnipeg Jets. The Oilers are tied for second with Montreal. The Vancouver Canucks host the Winnipeg Jets in NHL Scotia North Division play tonight. Vancouver beat Calgary Wednesday to move into a tie for fifth with the Flames. Sean, sorry, Sam Burns carries a two-shot lead into the second round of the PGA Tour's Genesis Invitational today. The American shot seven under yesterday. Mackenzie Hughes of Dundas, Ontario is the top Canadian. He sits at two under. This sports update for dubnetwork.ca, your number one source for Western Hockey League breaking news and analysis with the best team of writers across Western Canada and the Pacific Northwest. Visit dubnetwork.ca today. And for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars, now with eight amazing flavors, including the new almond mocha, order yours at g2gbars.ca. As we mentioned, we've got Derek Moncrief of the Los Angeles Rams with us here in the bunker, and I've said that we would answer a ton of questions here. Anthony Postero says, Hey, Derek, really like your game. What major differences did you find between the CFL and NFL game? Oh, man, the major difference um, after I, like, had to look back at it was um, the trenches, the, off the offensive line and defensive line. You know, guys down there like Aaron Donald, you don't see that, you know, uh, offensive linemen. Guys can six, seven, six, six, three hundred plus pounds. They can move. You know what I mean? So that's the biggest difference. Um, the game is much slower in the NFL. CFL game is fast. Everything's on the move all the time. So uh, that's the biggest difference for me. But that's yeah. That's the thing is yeah. you were ideally suited for the CFL because of your long, lean frame and your yeah. conditioning. Mm -hmm. 
How did that benefit you in the NFL, though? You, you still make a great special teams player down there because yeah. of your limbs and your speed and yeah. everything. But right. how, what's the differences in special teams? Uh, guys are really elite. Everybody's fast. You're strong. Uh, it's just those little things. It's the mental things. It's the um, just certain little techniques guys does. Um, Man, it's it's just the small things, really, when it comes down to it. Uh, everybody's athletic, athletic, and uh, it's just all a mental game as far as that. That's what I don't think a lot of fans understand. I mean, I look, a lot of talent comes into these yeah. free agent camps, but if you don't have it between your ears, right? You won't make it. You don't. You won't make it. You won't. Not, especially with right. Jones. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we we, yeah. we had a camp in Bradenton, and. Yeah. Uh, it was like 250 players out there. You went yeah. to one. You know what they're like. Yeah. And a high school coach came up to me. He thought I was a coach. He goes, yeah. oh, I get it. That redheaded guy over there is going to run everybody into the ground. And the guys <laughs> left standing make the team. <laughs> and I said, well, pretty much. Yeah. Right? That's a war different. of attrition. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, I remember my workout with Jones in Dallas. Oh, my goodness. After How long that, did it go? Whew, had to be like an hour. Like. I was dead. I just laid out on the field out there. <laughs> but he liked you. Oh, yeah. He yeah. did. He did. He yeah. did. He did. Uh, Craig Smith, our director of scouting, says, yeah. Moncrief is a hell of a player. Love this story. Dallas workout to the CFL to the NFL. Here's wishing you many years in the NFL. William Mace says, I love the rider edition on your clothing brand. Thanks yeah. for remembering us in Saskatchewan, and yeah. good luck in L.A. Yes, sir. That's from William, and it's the Going the Distance clothing brand that you can purchase at DerekMoncrief.com yes, or from his Instagram. The link is in the bio, as he said. Uh, Ivan Diablo, he's an Argos fan watching in Toronto. He says, <laughs> the major difference is money. <laughs> well, that's the obvious. Of course. That's the obvious. Yeah. Right? But I'm in L.A. too, so. It's more expensive, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a big chop. So uh, They're telling me 90 seconds before we got a break and we throw to Swiss League hockey. Yeah. Can you tell me about SoFi Stadium? It's on my bucket list. The yeah. Super Bowl's there next year. Yeah. Here's hoping that we can actually get into it. Yeah. What's it like, Kreef? Oh, man, that stadium is the best. The best right now, the best event center, um, performance center in the nation, uh, I think. So uh, you got to come check it out. Definitely going to be there. Super Bowl. L.A. Rams. Can't wait to see you. Yeah, the Rams against somebody. Yeah, right. somebody. And we'll be doing this show from right outside. Hopefully you can spare us a few minutes, Creve. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, these guys are going to tell me when we're throwing to Swiss League hockey, but I was yeah. in the Moncrief facility at the University of Texas. I've, I've mentioned that to you before. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, this must be a relation of Derek's uh, yeah. here in Austin, Texas. Yeah. How often do you get asked that? Oh, never got asked that question, but Sidney Moncrief, the basketball player, I get asked that all the time. Dante Moncrief for the NFL, we're not related, but I always get it. <laughs> always. <laughs> yeah, you might want to make something. You walk into the Longhorns facility yeah. in Austin, Texas, it's the Moncrief Center. Yeah. And I thought for sure as a relation of Derek Moncrief. Yeah. Derek, you hang on. Yes, sir. We are going to throw live to Swiss League Hockey. A big thank you today for Solomon Elementary and this guy, Derek Moncrief and Cam Judge. Enjoy the hockey, everybody, and we'll see you Monday. And we're still live on digital, so we just see what we did there. Yeah. So uh, here we go. So here we go with the questions from our viewers in the last segment that we have here with Derek. Who is the toughest player to defend in the CFL? In your opinion, Ooh, man, so many. Um, S.J. Green is crafty. Hard to cover, huh? Hard to cover. Great route runner. Um, not a fast guy, but he, he ran routes at the top of his routes. He, he was great. Um, Sinopoli, he was a great one. Um, Ellington. Oh, Mike Riley's a beast, though. Yeah, I thought you were going to throw a Bo Levi in there. But Bo Levi, you know, he's, he's good. He's <laughs> he, good, too. Yeah, but you're bringing up some other names. Oh, yeah, for sure. I got Mike you. Riley's the best I ever played against. From Dan Ukrainitz, how was playing for the mullet at OK State? <laughs> Talking about the coach there, yeah. of course. And how much yeah. potential does Canadian Chuba Hubbard have? Uh, coach Gundy was a great coach. Um, he ran the organization great. Uh, Love playing for the guy. Chuba, oh, yeah, he's a beast. He's ready. 
Why does Mike Gundy find himself in so much controversy all the time? <laughs> I guess he's just confident in himself, right? He doesn't care what anyone thinks of him or his actions or anything. So I can just say his self-confidence. You like playing for him? Uh, yeah, yeah, he was cool. <laughs> yeah, to think about. We didn't have any trouble, you know what I mean. Everything was good. So, <laughs> uh, what did, did, did is he yeah. like Chris Jones in a way? Jones has those similar um, attributes, yeah. right? But yeah, they're very. Uh, they're gonna tell you how it is, right? And they're gonna stand on their word, and that's it, right? Guys like that, which you appreciate. I yeah, would you gotta respect like that's honesty, right? I respect that as a man. So. Uh, yeah, they about the same. Well, that. you seem to attract guys like that, Creef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff, the Stampeders fan, says, "Can Rod yeah. get through a show without mentioning and taking subtle shots at Bo Levi?" I didn't bring up this shot. <laughs> I was asking for the best players in the CFL, and he didn't name Bo Levi. So, uh, just just clarifying that here, Creef. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you uh, roll here. Other than to say, yeah. one of the viewers says, "Did I miss Cameron Judge?" You did miss the Cameron Judge interview. You're going to want to go back and watch it in hour one. He talked about why he yeah. left to Saskatchewan and signed with the Toronto Argonauts. Yeah. Producer Clark is saying it's at the 54-ish minute mark of the interview. Well, Derek, I just want to say that uh, I've been following you very closely, very proud of what you've been doing, obviously. Yes, Big fan of the of the uh, Cazelle family. Yes, you, you know, you're part of a great bunch over there. Yes, sir. So, Keep it, go keep it going, and we'll see you around here this offseason. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Derek Moncrief of the Los Angeles Rams joining us in the bunker. Dupes joins us in here next. It'll be viewer takeover the rest of the way. You're watching the RP Show, YouTube and Facebook Live, Game Plus TV, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. An Original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or the donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. This right here is time well spent. Why not pour yourself a smooth Saskatchewan-made Original 16? Warm up to the opportunity to seize the day. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. 
I've been here since I was 10 years old, and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. He's covering everything that matters to you. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Tune in live Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to noon to catch the show live and be a part of the action. Take control by commenting live and sharing the show with your friends. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Producer Clark says in our ears, welcome back, Darren. Moose DuPont is back. Hey. Along with uh, Andre the Moose on the coffee table. Well, you don't know. I've been watching the show on, on, Have you? on Game Plus, and Kirby and I were having a chuckle. I'm in there. And, uh, I mean, this is the first time we're thrown to Swiss hockey, right? So then you do the awkward, awkward pause know, and you yeah. see, all right, we're still here on digital. See what we did there? <laughs> you were still on TV for about a second or two or three. Oh, great. <laughs> but before it threw, oh, man, then it cut to the Swiss hockey. So we had a chuckle. I don't care who it's on. <laughs> yes. uh, anyways, it's overtime. And. I'm not, it's the, cle- we have lots of time left here, by the way, an hour or two, but we have, um, it would be a cliche to do a face-off on whether the CFL is going to play or not. I'm, I, I, I'm frankly a little disgusted today with what's gone down. I do want to read, not with this show, of course, this show has been great. Wayne Grolo in Victoria is watching. He says, it's hard to keep saying best show because all of your shows are great, but yes, It's one of your best football Fridays so far. William May says, thanks, guys, for another fantastic show. And the guests were very classy. Greg Clevgard says, it's going to take a while before you can beat this football Friday, guys. Great show. Well, just like Telemiracle, we strive to go higher. And it continues to get better and better and better. But Solomon Elamimian, Cam Judge, Derek Moncrief, we haven't seen dupes since the uh, warm-up. It's just awesome. Hot show, yeah. And good vibes. Uh-huh. All through the, like, through the building, it's been a great, you know, almost electric vibe in here on a Friday. It's awesome. Like, it's the way you should end the week. And we always end the week not wanting to go home and not wanting to end the week. But, oh, I know. Uh, this, is, this is perfect. You come in on Monday and think you've been off for a month. I know. So... The CFL report we do every day. But the thing is, what's good from a news media standpoint is things have been changing every day. But this is what I posted this morning, okay? Okay. For the CFL report, and then I'll get to the update. But Commissioner Randy Ambrose says the CFL remains committed to returning in 2021, but is leaving the door wide open regarding exactly how that will look. The CFL unveiled a full 18-game schedule for all nine teams last November, one that Ambrosi said it remains on track for in 2021. However, the commissioner added the league is keeping all of its options, including teams playing fewer than 18 games, open. But there's no denying the importance of fans in the stands for CFL teams, so pushing back the start of the season until August or September could allow for more Canadians to receive their COVID-19 vaccination and thus be able to attend games. Ambrosi said, quote, we're taking a very committed, very pragmatic approach to this. We're going to play in 2021. We're just going to find a way. Sounded very optimistic. Didn't it? Mm-hmm. And then right off the bat today, and I have to thank Nelson Hacker, which our VP of Sim Events, directed us to an article by Dave Naylor at TSN.ca today, posted today, that said the CFL won't play without fans. Now, that's an opinion piece, but Naylor does not speak willy-nilly. I have the utmost respect from Dave Naylor, but that tells me he's getting that from league sources. So it's almost like that story came out with Ambrosi's quotes yesterday got everybody all excited including me darren we want cfl football we want jobs for these guys we want the coaches to coach we want to go to the games we've been we've grown our footprint across this country as the cfl show we got fans from every team we want the cfl to play and it's like somebody rung up nailer and said wait a minute we need to back up the truck here because we might not play so put it out 
that we not might not play if we don't have fans. It's incredibly discouraging, and I haven't really had you on since this all came down almost two hours ago. And I'm getting a little annoyed because my life does not depend on the CFL anymore. I want it, but we'll survive without it. But for all those people that don't and can't say that, I'd be pretty pissed off if I was them. Yeah, I would too. You know, we've been, we've been wanting the commissioner to come out and say something for a while, and, and he did, and, and it was great. And to say you're committed to playing, and commi- I think he said he was committed to playing a full season too, which is also optimistic and exciting. Um, but it's really tough to see the other side of it because the insiders like Dave Naylor, again, the good insiders that constantly have correct information, they don't make things up. They don't make things and up. Naylor doesn't make things up. No. So there's truth to what he's saying, always. And the fact that they're not willing to play with no fans, then it comes back to the same thing well, we uh, heard last uh, year, uh, blaming it on the government. Is it not almost nauseating where we're at? Like I said yesterday, you're good, you. As you pointed, like Naylor's not saying this without somebody tipping him off to say it. And that's coming from the league. Say, we still may not play if there's not vac- vaccinations across this country widespread and we can't open our doors, then we're not playing. That's what it sounds like to me. And so from Nelson, he says, with the CFL plan, the NHL released their plan one month before they were set to play. The NBA put out their plan 45 days before they were set to play. The desire for a CFL return to play plan is a little premature at that point. Nelson, that does not go along with what we were told today because the NHL and the NBA and the NFL all played without fans. That is the difference. What I want, and if I was a CFL person, I would be standing and demanding, how are we playing without fans? I want to know. And the CFL saying, they're providing themselves wiggle room Mm -hmm. to not play. Wiggle room to not play. But, you know, it also feels like, and... I don't blame them necessarily, but it also feels like there's a little bit of a fear to say we don't want to play. And not that we don't want to play, but to say we don't want to lose money, you know? You know, it, it, it's that image thing. You don't want to say, guys, I can't go out for drinks with you tonight because I don't have enough money. We're scared to do that because it's a status thing. And I think <laughs> the league true. is scared to say, look it, we don't have enough money to do this. We can't afford to do this. You know, they're scared to, you know, get down on their knees, right? And, and expose themselves a little bit and be, you know, vulnerable. And once you do that, it's very freeing. And it puts you back in power and in control of the oh, situation. Oh, you might get the help that you need. Right? Otherwise, you try and roll with the high rollers of the NHL and the NBA. And you make it work, but you ring up black card after black card after black card after black card. Eventually, the bill comes due. So, I mean, at the same time, if you're not going to play, at least be okay saying why. And we will understand. And I think we'll feel bad for you. And maybe we'd be more willing to put our name on the Grey Cup fan base. Right? But if you're trying to roll with the NHL and the big dogs, it's, it's awfully tough for us to feel sorry for you. But are they trying to roll with them? I, I, I don't know what they're trying to do. And I'm sitting here almost feeling like an idiot going along with these signings and talking about this league and covering this league because there's clearly a huge appetite for it. And then somebody comes along and says, no, 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 we need to create ourselves. A, we need to create a escape plan. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, leaders don't do that. And I opened this show by saying I would be incredibly disappointed in the leadership of the CFL if they do not find a way to play. And that's kind of where I'm sitting at right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Todd Pinkney says, well, Dupes was thinking a lot in his office over the last hour. My guess is you just whipped that off the cuff, what you just said. That's right. Am I right? You're right. You're right. Jordan Wall, viewer, says, what's the minimum allowed in stadium for the CFL to go ahead? 30% capacity? Well, I don't know. I'd heard 10, but do you understand, Jordan, that people are talking out of all sides of their mouths right now? That's a thing. You have no idea. I, am I speaking another language? I think the people that are the people that it affects the most, the players, the staff, 
a season ticket holder of which I am, can you not just stand up and tell us what your plans are? That's what's got me upset. I'm just going to speak for me. But it doesn't really affect my life. If I was a player and saying the, 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 the course of the rest of my life depends on what this league's going to decide, I would be beside myself. I know. It's... You can, and they, they, they can't pin down the leaders yeah. on details. Right. And those details are what creates the reason, the optimism, right? You know, we want to know. Like, it's easy for me to say, no, 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 like... Honey, we will get married one day, I promise. We're going to get married. She wants to know when the ring's coming, when we're getting married. Are we buying the house? Like, how many kids are we having? We want those details. That makes us feel a little bit more secure. Otherwise, she's shopping around for a backup plan, right? Well, and, and in the meantime, by the way, people move on. Fan-controlled football. Watching the NHL and NFL. If people have noticed, we could sit here and talk NFL all day every day or nhl or whatever like the world is moving on without these guys you I had, had a point you want well, i had a socially distanced conversation with shane who happened to you know you know works in the building and uh you know he's a season ticket holder he spends a thousand dollars a seat that's two thousand to four thousand dollars if he gets two or four tickets every summer well this summer if there's no cfl football he might decide they're gonna get a seasonal campsite up at waska sewer somewhere and the family might decide that they like that next year. You know, CFL's oh, yeah. coming back. Yeah, but we really enjoyed camping, so we're not going to buy our tickets the next year. You know, people fill their time with something else. Viewer Greg Clevgard says, I don't know a business that can operate in a negative balance sheet. Greg, lots of businesses are. Again, you want to defend the CFL? Go ahead. I've had a guy write into the, our website the other day and said something all, along the lines of who's going to step up with the cash to make it a break-even proposition for the CFL. Do you think the NHL teams are breaking even? Do you think these junior hockey teams that are returning to play are going to break even? They're all taking a loss. They're playing for the good of the players. They're playing for the good of the game and the good of the league. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I had a call yesterday with an incredibly – a large figure in CFL history. And he's very concerned with the state of this league because lack of leadership. He talked about names like Norm Kimball and Normie Kwong and guys that ran Tom Shepard's name came up as guys that did something in this league, got it through all kinds of unimaginable crises over the decades. And all those types of guys have been shoved aside for what we have right now. And it just seems like they just want to pick up and run. I would rather the CFL dies by going down swinging, going down with a fight, than just packing their tents and, and waving the white flag. To, con to keep a consistent standard of living or operation, you spend money when times are bad, and you pay it off when times are good. And that's how you stay with consistency. Right? When times are bad and money's not coming in, that's when you spend to get up to that line. And when times are good, you spend to pay off that debt. And this is when oh. times are bad. You have to spend. Three last comments before we roll from Ryan McCarthy. The NFL has two seasons, regular season and off season. They're always in the conversation. Yep. CFL doesn't want to be. From Sports Nut Central says, that's an incredible point. I'm a Ticat season ticket holder and a massive fan, but we can only keep pushing our ticket money credit for so many seasons before we ask for refunds eventually. Jordan Wall says, loving Rod's rant today. I don't know. A lot of these guys in the CFL will continue when the CFL reemerges. A lot of these guys from the Players Association will not. And that's why we're on their side. We'll see you Monday. We're out. Later. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I never told you to shut up. Well, a couple times. Yeah.